Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the last section in Chapter 3, and we're going to be doing uh, exponential and logarithmic models. And so there are some great models that we've studied so far. We've studied exponential growth models, such as e to the x. We've taken a look at exponential decay models, such as e to the negative x. We've taken a look at the natural logarithmic mo model, uh, the common logarithmic model, as well as the Gaussian model. Uh, this is a new model. This is what they do for SATs, for AP exams. They do a Gaussian model right here, or a logistic growth model, logistic growth model. So we're going to be taking a look at a lot of applications of these things. So first, let's take a look at this one. This is modeling population growth. You can see it says uh, estimates in amounts of billions of dollars, okay? And so we're, we have some data from 2011 to 2015. They graphed this data and they found out from time from 11 to 15, it gives us this function of s is equal to uh, 9.30e to the 0.1129t. And it says, when will we reach $80 billion? So 80 billion will be our s. So we have 80 billion. Uh, that 80 is going to be in billions, obviously, is equal to 9.30e to the 0.1129t. And so we're doing a little bit of algebra here. First thing we're going to do is divide by 9.30, 9.30, which means now we have, now we have 80 divided by 9.30 is equal to e to the 0.1129t. So now we got to get this e out. How do we get the e out is we're going to do natural log. So natural log of 80 divided by 9.30 is equal to 0.1129t because that natural log got that e out of there. Now the last but not least we're going to divide by 0.1129. So that means your time is going to be equal to 1 divided by 0.1129 natural log of 80 divided by 9.30. And now we're going to just plug that in our calculator. 1 divided by 0.1129 times the natural log of 80 divided by 9.30. And we end up getting time to be 19.06. And that is years after 2011. Okay, so you can see that 11 stands for 2011, so that would be 2019, almost 2019, we would end up be getting about $80 billion on this example for the population growth. Uh, we also ha can take a look at our modeling population growth of something like fruit flies or something like bunnies or something like even people. Yeah. That's what happened with your parents. Um, so we'll just leave that right there and take a look <laughs> at all of this. Disgusting, huh, Mr. Aiden? Disgusting. So uh, what do we know? We know our uh, population growth goes by a – it compounds continuously. So A is equal to PE to the RT right there. A is equal to P to the E to the RT. Pert. And so you can see we're going to get 100 flies. 100 is going to be our amount. And we have our P right there, P, E to the R, T. But that's going to happen after two days. So we have uh, P, E to the R times 2, or 2R. Two now, what else do we know? We know after four days, there's going to be 300 flies. So 300 flies is equal to P, E to the four days, so r times four. Okay, now you can see we have two functions here. We we weren't there at day zero, okay? We want to know what's going to happen after five days. This We just have, have some data after two days, some data after four days. This is what happened with coronavirus. This is what happened they do with modeling population growth or even death growth, all those different things. And so what are we going to do is, first got to solve for p, okay? So we have p is going to be equal to uh, 100 divided by e to the 2r. Then we're going to plug this p right in here. So we have 300 is equal to 100 divided b by e to the 2r times e to the 4r. Okay, we just plug that in for that p. So we're going to divide this 100 over here. So we have 300 divided by 100. So that's going to be 3 is equal to e to the 4r divided by e to the 2r. What do we do with exponents when we divide? We subtract them. So it's e to the 4r minus e to the 2r. That's e to the 2r. And so you can see 
we know 3 is equal to e to the 2r. What do we need to do to both sides? We need the natural log of both sides. That's the algebra of e. And so that gets our e out of there. So we have natural log of 3 is equal to 2 times r. Okay, So that means your r, your rate, is going to be 1 half of natural log of 3 or natural log of the square root of 3. Okay, So we have 1 half of natural log of 3 and we end up getting that rate ends up being 0.5493. Okay, 0.5493. So we want to know how many fruit flies are going to be there after five days. So we can come back in. Uh, oh, uh, one big thing. If we know what this R is, we can know what the population initially was. So we can plug this back in our first equation or our second equation, either one. And we can do 100 divided by E to the 2 times that 0.5493. And that means my population started with 33.33333 fruit flies. Okay, so approximately 33 fruit, fruit flies. And so remember, not all population modeling is exact. We only have two points here. We don't have enough points to know exactly um, exactly where we started at, but it, about 33 f fruit flies or so. So now we're going to plug this back in. And what do we know? Our amount is equal to 33.33. That was our initial amount. E to the R, that's 0.5493, times how many days? Five days. And that would tell me what amount, what amount, e to the 0.5493 times 5, that means we're going to have approximately 520 flies after 5 days. 519.6, five, five, which is going to be about five, 520 flies. So we can actually predict how many flies we're going to have the next day. This is what we did during coronavirus. This is what we do uh, all the time in modeling population growth. Uh, now, we might also uh, take a look at SAT scores, okay, SAT scores. So we can take a look at this SAT score. We can sketch out our function on our graphing calculator or on GeoGebra or something like that. And when we graph this, this function out, uh, this Gaussian model, we're going to see this graph come all the way up and all the way down, and we would be able to figure out the maximum, which is the average SAT score. And I think the average SAT score on this one is something like 520 or something like that. It's uh, We can take a look at that average, average SAT score if you graph that bad boy out. And so we can graph out Gaussian models, find out where the maximum is, and then we will be able to find out uh, what the average would be there for. Now we could also do a logistic growth model. This is a different look at this model here. And so you can see how many students are affected after five days. Here is my model right here. So we're going to plug five in for my time right there. So we have one plus four nine 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 times e to the negative point eight times five days. And we're going to do 5,000 divided by that number. And what do we know? After five days, okay, we got 54 students that are infected with this flu virus. Okay, so this is very applicable to what we've seen in 2020. And how many, after how many days will we cancel classes? Well, when, when will we cancel classes is when 40% or more students are affected. We have 5,000 students, 5,000 students, 40% of 5,000 students would be 2,000 of them. So when 2,000 students are infected, we got 5,000, 1 plus 4999e to the negative 0.8t. And so we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra here. So we're going to swip swap this out. So we have 1 plus 4999e to the negative 0.8t is equal to 5,000 divided by 2,000, which is equal to 2.5. We're going to subtract 1 and divide by 499. And I'm going to rush through a little bit of the algebra here. So 2.5, we're going to subtract 1. Then we're going to divide by 499. And we get 3 times 10 to negative fourth. Okay. What's the opposite of E is natural log. So we're going to natural log that answer. 
and then we're going to divide by negative 0.8 and we end up getting 10. Can you believe that? It only takes 10 days for 5,000 students on campus to be infected. That's crazy. That's amazing how you can see you got a flu virus and that flu virus will exponentially increase and infect people. One last example here I believe is we're going to take a look at a logarithmic model and this is how we measure earthquakes. We measure them in what's called the Richter scale and so the Richter scale is a logarithmic scale. It's like the pH scale. It's a logarithmic scale and in Alaska in 20 2012 we had a 4.0 earthquake. So the Richter scale is 4.0 equals log of uh, I over I naught which is 1. And so what's the opposite of log base 10 is 10 to the. So we have 10 to the fourth power equals I over 1. And so we multiply that so the intensity would be 1 times 10 to the fourth power and that would be the intensity of the uh, earthquake, okay? And so that is your logarithmic model. And this is exponential and logarithmic models, very applicable to real world circumstances, and that's why I love them, okay? I'll talk to you guys later. See you guys, bye.